Access Fort Wayne offers reflections of our community. Production facilities provided by Access Fort Wayne are a service of the Allen County Public Library. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting organizations. For more information about creating your own television program with Access Fort Wayne, call 421-1250. I'm John Dickmeyer. Welcome to Potpourri. Hello, Randy. Hi, John. Guess who we have here with us today? A wonderful, wonderful guest. It is. He is a super guest, and he's been with us before. It's mm -hmm. Shane Grantham. Hi, Shane. Hi, John. Hi, Randy. Hi, Shane. Thanks for having me here. Shane is our expert on things computer and computer related and I thought we were uh, really in need of talking to folks out there about all the dangers in computing particularly when you're connected to the internet and there are a lot of dangers and uh, one of them makes me want to cry. <laughs> what is what is that? <laughs> why, why would I ever want to cry with a computer? You're talking about ransomware, which is a form of malicious software similar to a virus, but it uh, attacks your computer and changes your files so you can't get to them, you can't access them, and then they want a ransom to get the files back that have been encrypted. So. It uh, makes a lot of money for the cyber criminals. Is there, is there any way to get around that? Yeah, if, there's, if it's you? It depends on what kind of operating system you have, but if you've got a Windows operating system, well, of course, any of them, Mac or a Linux computer, you should keep your uh, operating system updated, which means Windows updates should be current. Mm -hmm. So you should make sure that they're getting updated and your other software like Adobe Flash Player, Adobe Reader, um, Apple, uh, QuickTime, any of those things should be updated as well. Your word processors, spreadsheets. Uh, that's, that's probably the best way to stay protected. Mm -hmm. There's other things we can talk about too. But. Seems to me that the Microsoft environment is, is the one where the pieces are a lot more independent and that you as a user have to be a whole lot more diligent about making sure that those pieces in addition to the operating system are are fixed am, am I correct in making that assumption right yeah you yeah usually the user is kind of on their own there, there are uh, programs you can install that will watch your programs and you can run a check on them and they will tell you if your word processor is out of date or if you know Adobe Flash Player needs updated or your Java you see that a lot with your web browsers so there, there are things you can if you know what to download there's a, a thing from Sekunia, Um it's called um, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it watches, so you can run in and it checks your programs to see what needs updated. So on your screen, when this little pop-up comes up and says something about Java and updates available, you should do that? Uh, yeah, in most cases. Every time? Y right, yes. Okay. Uh, there are cases where there, that could be a trick also. Well, <laughs> so that's, that's what people, yeah, it's a, always a quandary for me, you know, when people say, well, I should click on this if it comes up, and I can usually tell by the way it looks if it's legitimate. But if it comes up and it's got a lot of English in it and scary um, sentences like you, know, you could get infected and 
it goes into kind of eloquence and mm -hmm. that's a fake alert but oh. if it's just pretty dry and you'll see the java alert will come up in the right hand corner usually javascript or, mine just or came up last night and i'm always okay yeah do I do, I do this, this? yeah that's it's probably okay okay but not having seen it it's hard to right. see right but it's, it's but pretty not a lot of verbiage it's yeah just it's, pr available. it's probably okay then and they have a certain icon that uh, looks like a uh, coffee cup right. for java yeah mm -hmm. that's that's probably okay then okay yeah that's one thing so backing up files is is one defense and if you've done that appropriately that may not save your system but it'll save your files Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, when you do a backup, in the case of ransomware, to prevent that, you'll need to take the backup offline. So if you plug in your thumb drive or an external USB drive into the front or the back of the USB port, make sure it's disconnected when you're done. Because the ransomware, a lot of them will go and look for your backups and wipe those out on your computer. And they, I even had a client one time that they had things in their Dropbox uh, cloud storage mm -hmm. and they thought well we're going to get it off Dropbox and I checked their Dropbox and all their files were encrypted from ransomware on their Dropbox too so and of course they didn't have an external backup so you need to have your your external backup offline somewhere and have a couple of them too mm -hmm. if you do it that way and you can save it to the uh, on your network to another computer another server and you can use cloud storage too but just be aware that it's going to look everywhere it can find a ransomware infection mm -hmm. and, and try and wipe that out so you can't recover. So. I'm not even going to tell you. I leave my things in. I guess okay. I'll well, take that hey, right that's out <laughs> tonight. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> so let's say I decide to uh, take the view that, oh, I'm not going to pay the ransom. My first thought would be, oh, I'm going to find someone to decrypt all these files that have been encrypted. What are my chances of being able to do that without their key? Uh, from my experience, I have witnessed a couple, well, maybe three computers it was last year, there were the year before that had ransomware, and I couldn't get anywhere with it, and uh, I couldn't decrypt it. They say, though, that if you, in a lot of cases, if you pay the ransom, they will give you the key because if word gets around that paying them is not going to get your data back, they're going to lose all the money they make, the, the mm -hmm. cyber criminals. Mm -hmm. And I have read, and I haven't used any of them yet because I haven't needed them for clients, but they say that some of the um, antivirus or anti-malware companies have decryption programs that you can use on some of the uh, more famous or the older infections, but, but they're saying the new stuff that's coming out can morph itself and change all kinds of things. So even if you've got, you think you can find the key, it won't work, so. But I've read a lot of articles on it and uh, just that's what they're saying, so. Okay, if I do, if, if, I take a different tact and I say, oh well, I am just going to rebuild my computer. Will that work? It will, will uh, going through and reformatting the drive and reinstalling the operating system and all the programs, will that get me back to where I was? if I have a backup on my other files. It should, in theory, as long as the drive you plug back into your computer is not infected and doesn't jump back on it. But uh, yeah, that, that should work, because a lot of places say that they won't even try to clean an infection that's ransomware, or sometimes even viruses, they will just wipe and reload it. But a lot of the ransomware will cover its tracks, and it will remove itself after it encrypts your file. So when you go to scan for something, it won't, you won't even find it, but your files are still encrypted. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty scary what so, they do. So, so in a situation 
like that, a, a reformat would would give you a clean disk, and and then if you reinstall, uh, say Windows 10, then you then theoretically you should have a clean installation. Yes. But as I see it, then you've got all the time that you need to put in to reinstall all the programs that you've that you had before. Right, yeah, I, I, I agree. Or pay someone to do it or have someone do it for you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a time consuming. So basically any document you create you need to put on the thumb drive. Any program that you keep data in, you should say everything should be saved to these thumb drives. Right, or an external drive, or I, I, you know, you could still use cloud storage, and like in my case, I save things to other computers on my network, and I still use external backups, you know, a external drive that's a USB or a thumb drive, and mm -hmm. I make sure it's not connected to anything, and lock that up or take it someplace off-site. So yes, to answer your question, but I'd have at least two copies that aren't on your computer. Because you can, you know, those hard drives can go bad too. Okay, so yeah. pretty much you shouldn't have anything stored on your computer. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying have a backup copy. I know John okay. differs in our um, philosophies on that. I keep stuff local and I also have backups. And I know John likes to keep things not even on the computer. So if but you keep it like you do, and something happens to it, you still have this thing that right, can reload. Right, as long it. as it's been mm -hmm. updated recently. And a lot of times you'll get, people will get lazy and they'll say, oh, I backed up last year, I backed up three years ago, and, but you know, you ch a lot of things will change. Like you said, database programs, mm -hmm. your QuickBooks, that'll change daily if you're a busy company. So even, even a day or an hour <laughs> can, can be the difference. And uh, I, I can't say that I've had problems that way, but I saved material at one point to a thumb drive, and then the thumb drive disappeared in the house. Sure, yeah, they're small enough. And, and, and they are small enough. Did Velvet eat it? No. <laughs> but it, but, I but st ask. strangely, <laughs> strangely enough, uh, I found it uh, a couple months later underneath a rug in the bathroom. That's a good place to hide it. And that, and that is. That's a wonderful place. <laughs> There, w there wasn't any, it wasn't a question of ransomware, it was just a question that it disappeared. I've also had a thumb drive, believe it or not, go through the washer uh, okay. at, 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 in our house, come out, and it wasn't a clean thumb drive, everything was left in it, by some miracle. I mean, it went through the dryer, too. Didn't. So it, it didn't destroy the magnetic. And I Make still it. use that. Oh, nice. So, you know, that's, that's it. Mm. I, you know, I have a little bit different philosophy from, from Shane in a couple areas. And I do a fair amount on the internet, but I really don't use my Microsoft computer that much for searching the internet for, you know, you other, th other than real common things that I go back to over and over again. I have a Linux right. Mint computer and that's what I use to, uh, for the most part, to search that. Why? Well, one, Shane mentioned something that's real important, and, and you did. Uh, on Linux Mint, there is a feature called the Update Manager. And instead of just updating um, yeah. common things, it updates every, 
it searches and updates every program you have installed. That's nice. So, nice. so for example, um, there's the equivalent of uh, the Google uh, Chrome browser. Chrome. It's called Chromium. In Linux, right? In Linux. And so when there's a change in on Microsoft, there'll be a change on Linux and they'll push through. They call them packages in, in Linux and they'll push through the package, new package. When there's an Adobe change, they'll push through Adobe or uh, um, a Mozilla uh, Firefox, they'll push that through. But in addition, there are all these other programs that are, that are there that are offered through the Linux and they're all updated. So they have different names than are, than are common, but one of them is a burning program. It oh. burn, burns CDs and DVDs. Bra Brasio or? Uh, Bra yeah, Bra Brasero. Brasero, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, well, we use it, so that's why we use it. Yeah, I use it a lot. There's, so. an, there's another one called K3, and, and you know, a whole bunch of other specialized programs that have different names in the Linux. They're all updated off that manager. In one place. In one place. And if you're vigilant and you use your computer regularly, wow, you see that, that come up on that manager. It's, it's down there on the, on the bottom bar and you know, if everything's okay, there's a check mark. Yes. And if there isn't, thirteen th updates, then, or fourteen then, then, updates. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and it and it's good. And th that's see, that's what makes that a, a good program because they run ahead of a lot of the Microsoft changes. That's good. Uh, so. Tell us about the other operating system, oh. the Apple operating system. Right. Well, about Linux, I'll just let's touch on that one okay. more time. Uh, Linux is a lot safer for viruses than oh, Microsoft. It? Yes, I mean you'll have people tell you that it's that it isn't, but from my experience, you're not going to see the infections from any kind of malicious software on Linux as you will in Windows because I work with both of them. Mm -hmm. Most of my clients are Windows people, though, mm -hmm. so. But Did you have Linux? I use both, you're right. Okay. I've got Windows and Linux in my office, and I carry a Linux computer that can run Windows 7 in a virtual machine, so I can still get to Windows if I want, but most people aren't going to do that. But it's, uh, it is a lot safer. But Macs are, there, there are um, ransomware infections that are just coming out to Macs now. Uh, nothing like Windows, though. The, you know, Windows is kind of a virus magnet in a way. Is I it? Mean, but most people are using Windows operating systems, so. Why would they stay with Windows over Linux? Well, because uh, it's just in our mindset that you have to use Windows to get anything done in, in today's um, business world or office world, mm. you know, because of the heavy advertising they do. And, okay. and it's just, it's ingrained in our society. And and it's easier. It's the, it's easier to get programs that do what you want, and and quite frankly, it's easier for most people to install them. I think. Oh, in Windows, in right? In Windows. But yeah, Linux is a lot e is very easy to use nowadays. The the graphical user interface ones, like Mint's that John and I both use. Oh, yeah. But there's. There's all kinds of different things, but maybe we should touch on what you should not do in a Windows computer to not get ransomware. Sounds good to <laughs> me. Let's go for it. Uh, probably the, the one way ransomware gets delivered to your computer is um, 
an email mm -hmm. and they call them phishing emails. They're crafted or they're designed to get your attention and it may be from someone you know or it looks like it's from someone you know and it really wasn't but there's usually a payload in it like an executable that you would click on. You know, it may be like, oh, here's a neat video of something or here's a program you might like and it can come in that way. Uh, and also go into like websites that even they're safe websites but somehow they got infected and the owners of the websites didn't figure out that they're infected with a payload. Or if, if you get redirected to a, a, a website that does have a payload for real, I mean that's their intention is to infect as many people as they can. And it, just going to the site and going to a page can infect your computer if you're not patched properly. That's the whole key. If you can keep your computer patched, Windows, Linux, or Mac, keep what everything updated. patched? Well, updates that we updates. were talking about. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you see a Windows update, there most Windows computers nowadays are set to do an automatic update. So mm -hmm. you'll, you may see that installing five of seven updates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's kind of a. Okay. And those security updates are really, really important. If I know they're a pain to to have executed sometimes, but the, but if you see a when are they they sometimes they have they have KB in front of the oh knowledge base yeah they knowledge base they're, a they're Microsoft knowledge base yeah, yeah. and they're and some of them are tag security updates, and those are really, really important mm -hmm. to get in there because Microsoft has figured out uh, what some of the common problems are. Um, no, another thing that, that I think is important is you know, a good firewall. Make sure you've got a good firewall. Oh, virus protect. Yeah, definitely on uh, Windows computers you need a security product of some kind and you know you hear the Norton, the McAfee's and Kaspersky's mm -hmm. and there's Sophus, there's tons of them. I like one called Komodo Internet mm -hmm. Security. I'm not telling, saying it's perfect but it has a firewall bit, uh, built into it. It has a virus signature database and it also has a, it's called a heuristics which means behavior. It's got a section that mm -hmm. that watches behavior on your Windows computer and if something looks funny, meaning it's accessing something it shouldn't, it's going to flag it and it may even sandbox it or stop it. And it also gives you a chance to allow it or not allow it. But that's if you use that together, like John's saying, if you're vigilant with that product, I think it does a lot to protect your computer. That's what I mean. Tell, our, you, tell our folks what you mean by sandbox. Oh, a sandbox. Uh, that's a, like a security term for you have a section of your computer that uh, the Komodo sets up that puts bad programs in. Mm -hmm. Let's it execute, but it doesn't let it write or change anything on the operating system on Windows. So if it deems something um, questionable, it may be a program that's perfectly legitimate, like it's a, a new program that you just installed, but it's not in Komodo's database as something safe. It'll quarantine it or put it in a little prison cell. It'll still run, but it won't let it write things or hurt your computer. So. Hmm. It's got a lot of neat things in Komodo's product. And it, it works well. I've used that in the past. Um, right now, I'm using uh, a proprietary that uh, Frontier Communications oh, okay. uh, puts out. And um, I pay extra for that because I have a Fios connection, but uh, that works well too. So, uh, in any event, regardless of what you use, you need to use something. Yes, definitely. And and as I say, I you know when I was using uh, an earlier version of Windows. I actually use Komodo and I found it very, very good. Um, anything strange that would happen, it would let you know yeah. immediately and not in a very gentle way. It would come up 
right away. Uh, yeah, it's 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 very good, uh, and sometimes we make mistakes as users. Oh sure, yes. <laughs> Click the wrong thing or, or say allow. Some, I've seen this before. They, well, it kept popping up, so I allowed it, and it turned out it was an infection. And mm -hmm. if you're not sure, you know, call or find me or whatever, or or say no if if it wasn't anything you were installing at the time or running that would have done that. And that's important too that you need to that you need to do that. Okay. Other than <laughs> <laughs> other than ransomware, uh, are there any other nice, cute little oh. <laughs> uh, termites out there that are uh, infecting our silicon oh. world? <laughs> silicon. Yeah. Sure. There's lots of different ones. There's regular viruses. There's a uh, um, Trojan horses, uh, spyware, adware, and there's root kits, just the ones I can think of. What's a root kit? A root kit is something malicious that gets into the um, operating system, deep into the operating system, and it changes certain files in there to avoid detection by security mm -hmm. software, antivirus software. and. Uh, and some products can actually scan for that before Windows starts because if you've got a root kit in there, it's probably if it's a good one, it will circumvent your security, and then it can do whatever it wants on your computer. So and it's. Is there any way of getting ahead of all this stuff? Uh, don't use a computer. Okay, <laughs> kind of what I That's thought. I, I, tell, I joke with people all the time. I says, if you don't need to use a computer, don't use one. But not too many businesses nowadays can go without that. I, I've got a few people that I know that don't use a computer, but most people have to for the government or their business or their clients mm -hmm. require them to do that. But I, using Linux and Mac computers is a good way to stay safer. Now, Linux is the program or is the computer with the program? It's, it's an operating system. Operating and it system. will run on old Windows computers or new Windows computers, which is really neat. But I know this isn't about Linux, but it's just, it's right. really a nice solution. I mean, and people don't understand it when I talk about it a lot of the times. But it's it can run on an old Windows computer and, and save cool. you money. Yes, mm -hmm. you and know. If, okay. Quite frankly, the one uh, well, actually, both computers that I have that are running Linux were old Microsoft XP yes. computers. I've got one that oh. still has a floppy drive and it's running Linux on it. It's not extremely fast, but it's pretty nice for that old. Hmm. But real quick, I want to just mention, I'm not telling you to abandon Windows. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, keep a Windows computer or two around and then just you know, use Linux for the internet stuff. I think it's nice for somebody that's not like the big businesses and all, but you're talking about your personal use person. Sure. It's nice to know that there's options out there oh to yeah. feel more safe with. There's, yeah, besides Microsoft, yes. Okay. I think we're coming to the end of what we darn it. What we need to do. <laughs> yes, it is darn it. Uh, and I'm not really into knitting, but we need to knit everything together right. here. Uh, I th I think the end of all here is I want to use a uh, a paraphrase from the Bible. We need to be sober and be vigilant because our enemy out there, the virus man, <laughs> is out there waiting waiting to get you. So. You need to be, you folks need to be smarter. And that's about it. Thank you, Shane. Oh, you're welcome, John. Thank you all. I'm John <laughs> Dickmeyer, and this has been Potpourri.